Re regarding today's game, uh, UNC executed uh, longer and more effectively than us. Um, game was really tight at halftime. Um, and then they were able to sustain uh, drives, um, execute when needed, recover from turnovers uh, at a higher level than, than we were. And so really uh, their program is currently is more mature and farther along than ours is. And it was reflected as the game continued to go on. Um, so we need to continue to mature, continue to grow, and continue to um, stay together and support one another. Some things that improved today, our kickoff coverage um, was markedly improved. Our kick return was markedly improved. Um, I liked both of those a lot. We were a little bit inconsistent in the punt game, which was uncharacteristic. Um, and um, um, third down, I think, was one of the telling stories of the game today. Um, our inability to convert on third down was, uh, with the number of attempts we had, just didn't allow our point production and our time of uh, um, possession to, to um, the, the longer we had the football, even though we had the edge, the better it was against a team that goes that fast, um, that frequently. Um, defensively, there's uh, the short field score at the beginning from the 30 and then the gadget play at the end. Um, I was pretty comfortable with how we were playing up until halftime. Uh, really just disappointed with uh, the one score toward the end where it was 28-14, I think we had it, and uh, we gave up a deep ball over the top. That was a critical play. That um, I'm not saying that determined the outcome, um, but you know we make a stop there, and there's a chance with enough time left that maybe we can battle back in there. So um, that's what I saw. Felt it was necessary to allow um, with the pressure that was uh, uh, going on uh, on Bankert, um, starting from the second half of the pit game through this game, why is just to have him step back and see it from a little bit different perspective and, and take a breath and regroup. And so um, Connor came in and, and did a nice job orchestrating a drive. Our run game was uh, smoke, I think, at over 100 yards, which um, he had some nice runs. Albert Reed ran for um, some physical runs as well. But in general, um, they moved the ball and executed both on both sides of the ball, all three sides of the ball, longer and more consistently than we did, which is reflective of their program. Um, I'm not sure where they'll finish in the polls, but I think it's a good football team. Um, still too early to say how good, but um, probably worthy of the ranking. So I'll be glad to take any questions. Yeah, Bronco, could you talk about that sequence at the start of the second half in the third quarter, their, their possession where uh, Kaiser gets the fumble, and then you're unable to capitalize. Yeah. It seemed like that was real. That that one that one hurt as well. Yeah, um, and we're we're learning to be resilient. We're learning to be mature. We're learning to be more consistent. Um, but yet, um, there are there are some things that right now are just simply above our threshold, and and that was one of them. It, when we weren't able to to cap to capture that. Um, there is a where we're not a strong enough team yet that um, we can overcome. We cannot that, that we can't capitalize those, on those opportunities and expect to have um, the kind of success we want. We need to capitalize on every one of those opportunities, and um, that was a huge play by Micah, who's I think he played every single play defensively um, and has the entire year and is just a, a really really good football player. Bronco, the, I guess Kurt's last two series, the kind of the weird exchange between him and Smoke when the fumble and then his last pass just seems like a huge disconnect between yep. him and a receiver. Yep. Do you feel like, he, you know, I mean, since that pick six, he just doesn't look like the same guy. Do you think that's had a lingering effect on him? Or how would you kind of gauge you know, him right I, now? I can't speak in terms of a lingering effect, but um, just simply um, there has been uh, an effect by playing better football teams. And so um, between now moving – toward Pitt and now moving toward North Carolina and, and getting the ACC play, we're getting a clearer idea of exactly where we are as well. And each player is. And Kirk is, Kurt is really visible. And so um, I think the combination maybe of um, the second half a week ago and then some of the pressure he was getting early, um, uh, I can't speak for him, but it looks like he's not quite as confident and, and poised. And so, um, but that by no means means uh, rejected or dejected. It just simply means it's time to regroup. Anything else for me? Bronco, uh, 
you talked about a couple missed opportunities that could have changed the game. What about Joe Reed's kickoff return where yeah. he kind of trips over his own feet at the end? Yeah. Um, number one, you have to be a great athlete to get as far as you can get and as far as he did get. And uh, I think he was straining to make uh, do everything within his power to help our team win. And um, that's, that's the way that I saw it. He was straining and just trying as hard as he could try. And sometimes those things happen. Real quick, just to clarify, are you still committed to Bankert starting next week when you say take a step back? Oh, so the step back was really from today's performance to allow him to see the game from the side and regroup. And so uh, I think at this point, I meet with Coach and I, I meet with Coach Beck, and we kind of then decide what's best moving forward. And too soon right now, and especially before I've even seen the film, to, to kind of, I need a little time to digest and assess too. We talked during the week about the opportunity for the run game with how they've struggled. Uh, Smoke did get to the 100-yard mark. Yep. What, what did you see? Were you happy, or did you expect to get more out of that? Well, I, I was I was happy with how we used it. Um, really, our, our to me, the, the, the story or the underlying factor of the whole thing was third down. Um, when I think we were 3 of 19, and that's um, that doesn't allow you to, to be able to generate the points necessary to, to win. And... And so the run game was as effective as our third down conversions allowed it to be. It would be the way I would answer that. Bronco back here, just yeah. from your perspective, um, what was North Carolina's offense able to take advantage of specifically? What was Mitch Trubisky? What was wor working for Trubisky back there? Um, the, the the plan was was pretty simple, and and that's a team that um, you know, I'm not sure how many points uh, they score per game in terms of an average. Um, but my guess is their numbers were probably right about where they've been. Um, they, their running back uh, is physical. And two simple concepts, the, uh, the ability to run the football to the field um, and then uh, and throw the ball off play action to the boundary. Um, and so it seemed like they converted um, those two concepts were two things they just kind of kept going back and forth and had enough sustained success um, without um, giant, giant plays, there was one um, on, the, gad on the, uh, the play action at the end. Um, but it was a little bit more methodical than what I'd expected they were, they'd be able to do. Our third down was, was average. Um, I would have liked to maybe shave two more of the conversions off of there. But running around us rather than through us, and then um, kind of boundary isolations. And so they kind of targeted the Bryce Hall matchup today with the first year. Bronco was the right right here. Oh. I'm sorry. Your gadget touchdown. Is that a formation that you've used previously at Brigham Young? No, uh, not at BYU, but we've had it. We've worked on it since, uh, man, about four weeks in a row, just kind of carrying it and carrying it. And, um, and it became pretty clear to me about uh, three plays ahead of it that if we got into that situation, we were going to use it. And it worked great. Is eligible because he's uncovered. Is, is that exactly right? And even though he's a center, he has an eligible number, and we've aligned the formation as such that he's an eligible receiver. And Matt Johns is a skilled quarterback, so um, we had a play earlier this season, if you remember, where we shovel passed it over to the side and ran it in. And so it, it, um, I was happy with that play. And and quite frankly, as where we currently are, that doesn't mean we re we rely on only those plays, but we need a couple per game right now to generate momentum and or points or or just uh, help us win. Can you give that to uh, Doug? Sorry. <laughs> it seems like uh, kickoffs have been an issue for you recently. Uh, is Sims, Sims' groin injury just lingering and he can't get it to the end zone? Or? No. Um, so today um, there was a change with Sam um, and he uh, – as that competition is kind of emerging, Sam's placement of the ball, which uh, where he can kick it specifically in terms of target, is is kind of a nice match to the, the improved personnel we put on the unit to cover. And so I actually liked our kick, kickoff cover with the exception of one today uh, where the ball was placed much shorter than we wanted it. It was supposed to be deep right, and it ended up being much shorter than we wanted it. Um, so that would be the only one I would find fault with from what I saw today in an overall bright spot of kickoff coverage when that has been a struggle. Yeah, so uh, um, I'll address the, uh, the other issue. Um, so I, uh, I, I love running a fantastic football program uh, in every regard, and every means every. And, 
and I, uh, I love the young men that I coach, and, and they know that. Um, the investigation is ongoing, and the university policy is that I'm not to speak uh, regarding any of that while the investigation is ongoing. Um, but I, I'm very lucky to be the coach at the University of Virginia. There's great things ahead for us. Um, a lot of work ahead also, um, um, but this, uh, this team, we have a, we have a principal um, that, that goes really deep, and that's family first, last, and always, and they're acting like that, and I think as coaches we act like that. And so that's really all I'll say at this point until the investigation is, is over.